safety limits. Warning, temperature critical. Warning, taking heat damage. The Super Cruise Overcharged FSD is a modified jump drive variant that, at time of writing, sacrifices raw hyperspace jump performance for the ability to boost in Super Cruise. This boost function is activated using the same button currently mapped for normal thruster boost. The overcharge mode allows for vastly increased acceleration and top speed, but generates tremendous heat, reduces the effectiveness of ship control systems, and will rapidly drain the largest available fuel tanks. I will refer to frameshift drives that have supercruise overcharge as SCO drives going forward for brevity. SCO systems are impractical for extended use, though all ships can sustain shorter SCO cycles to varying degrees. When triggered, SCO acceleration begins immediately. The system takes a few seconds to ramp up and can be shut down quickly if needed, though it takes a few seconds more to ramp back down to normal operation. When decelerating from SCO, pilots should be aware that a significant amount of momentum from the initial acceleration is preserved and requires extra time to dissipate. Drive performance changes based on module class, with smaller SCO modules able to achieve a greater degree of acceleration, and therefore cover more distance with shorter jumps. This ultimately means that larger drives can get farther in SCO mode than smaller ones, but smaller drives can still outrun them over shorter distances. This dynamic gives the greatest advantage to ships with large fuel reserves compared to their frameshift drive modules. The greater the difference, the longer an individual jump can be sustained, though this metric does not account for the massive strain that SCO mode puts on ship systems while in operation. SCO drive systems generate more heat per second than any other single module in the game, in addition to causing significant control interference. Both these factors scale upward with drive size, though larger ships are better able to manage the thermal stresses than smaller ones. No solution currently exists to deal with control system interference. While in SCO mode, pilots should be aware that damage from overheating appears to be amplified compared to the same damage in normal space. Additional testing is required to confirm this, but video evidence can be found of ships being destroyed by catastrophic failures resulting from overheat conditions. Understanding these drawbacks is important when considering this drive as part of a ship build. The meta for SCO technology is still evolving, but there are already a number of excellent use cases. Intra-system travel is the most significant improvement facilitated by SCO, and is the most accessible. Jumps lasting a few seconds are sufficient to cover several thousand light seconds, even within the influence of stellar gravity wells. This means travel times to stations at inconvenient distances between 1,000 and 25,000 light seconds can now be completed in a few minutes, as opposed to 10 or more. Current drives provide this benefit at the cost of hyperspace performance which is a hefty penalty for traders and explorers to pay, as it renders long-range trading, and much of the galaxy, inaccessible without fleet carrier support. Said support is where SCO technology does gain a massive edge, since your position in a given star system is now much less important. Gone are the days where a parking orbit next to your favorite station is required for time-efficient trading. Explorers who are willing to tether themselves to a fleet carrier will find that the time required to fully scan large star systems has been greatly reduced, making it much easier and more justifiable to scan lower value bodies which would otherwise be ignored. Traveling between the stars of binary systems is one of the most time intensive activities in the game, with the Hutton orbital run being the most common example over an hour of non-stop flight to the most remote outpost in the game. Unfortunately, this distance is far too great for any ship to cover in a single SCO cycle, though I imagine this feat will be highly sought after going forward, 
it's possible advancements in this technology will eventually enable single jump transits, but we are not there yet. This does not mean that the SCO drive is useless for deep space travel, only that it requires commanders to be more strategic about when and where they choose to use it. Overcharging allows a ship to power out of deep stellar gravity wells, achieving high supercruise speeds far sooner than would otherwise be possible, and greatly shortening the overall travel time. New records are already being set for this trade route. Ships with large enough reserves can execute multiple short jumps along the way, affecting significant benefit without needing to overheat. Applications for warfare are still being determined, but merchant ships are already applying this technology to avoid interdiction by pirates and political operatives. Smaller ships have full engagement control in SCO and are more able to choose where and when a given fight takes place, if at all. This does not leave pursuing ships completely out of the fight, but it does mean that some popular metacraft, like the Ferdilance, will struggle to catch smaller quarry. SCO technology is a powerful tool for use in a number of powerful applications in trading, combat, and power play. While it can be used for exploration, high fuel, limited hyperspace range, and the prospect for module damage, makes it impractical for use without the support of a nearby carrier or station. With this technology still in its infancy, further advancements are expected in the near future, with a high probability that SEO technology makes it into other drive systems going forward. Traders and combat pilots will find this technology the most useful, especially when supported by fleet carriers. That's all I have for today. Catch you all later.